I'm Tanya Buckingham Anderson, and I'm joined by Vanessa Napke Wetzel today to talk about a project that we worked on together in 2013. I'll be watching from home and keeping an eye on questions that may come in. For a very long time, we wanted to share this work. We did this work in the UW Cart Lab back in 2013 and are finally getting to do finally getting to share it today. I'll set the context for the project and Vanessa will go over the approach and products of the project. Then I'll circle back to talk about the results of the testing. Many years ago, NASA started an, an initiative called MapGiving, not to be confused with the State Department MapGive that came along afterwards. The idea was to match a group of cartographers willing to do some pro bono work with people who may know the power that maps can have in achieving their goals, but maybe didn't have the budget in order to do that. Um, or we proactively reached out to people that we thought we might be able to help visualize the work that they were doing. Our initiation was a kickoff at NASIS in Missoula, Montana in 2008, where we assembled two teams of cartographers and mapped from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. the night before the conference. Then all of the exhausted cartographers uh, were the keynote for the conference to get things started for the week. Uh, as a sign of the times, there was a digital team and a print team working to complete the maps for the Hank Aaron State Trail in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That was our partner for that, that project. Uh, from there, map giving took on a few different approaches, from presentations and locations where we had held NASIS, uh, to working on natural earth data and cold calling nonprofits. Often when I would do this, I would have conversations with executive directors and explain the concept of what we were doing and their response would often be, great, we need a map to show where our office is. Well, we were of course happy to do that. Um, what we were really hoping to be able to do was help them visualize the impact of their services. But it was at least a, a beginning conversation. Over time, I was able to take the lessons we learned from map giving and was able to incorporate them into my work at UW-Madison. From design challenges that Professor Rob Roth and I co-lead with community partners to Grandparents University, which my colleagues Jamie Martindale, Jude Limer, Karen Turk, and Rob also participated, and many other events around our community. One project that was, was referred to us because of map giving um, had come through Amy Griffin, the past president and current editor of Cartographic Perspectives. She sent along a request from a nurse who had previously worked in GIS. The nurse felt that there had to be a solution to a challenge that she was having. This nurse was working at a free clinic in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Many of her patients could, not benef or could benefit from free services that were located all over the city. However, many of them could not read or could not read English. She wanted to know if we could design maps for people who had low to very low literacy. This sounded like a very good challenge for a group of students interested in map design. So I, des I designed a course around it. It was a three credit course taught in a blended model. We spent time not only on cartographic design, but also really building the culture with intentionality. As we all know, if you don't create culture, it will create itself and not always in the way that you'd like it to be. So we opened the class with some common understanding, not only with the clients or what the syllabus had laid out, but with ourselves. We talked about goals of the project, um, how to meet the needs of the user, and um, through this, we learned that it was really going to be critical that the students had access to the client regularly. Um, and she was amenable to this. Um, the process to get this information I generally follow is to allow people to reflect. I ask them to bring a piece of paper and jot down their ideas. And then we share and have a pretty active conversation um, ab about this. I ask a student to take notes on, on a big piece of paper on a chalkboard or something that everybody can read. Uh, I really want this to be developed by the class and not seen as something that I'm creating for them. Um, the goals included a lot of things that I would have expected to come out of this exercise. Um, again, it was really clear that the students were going to need access to the, the the client pretty regularly. Uh, she fielded questions from the students throughout the semester. She also presented an opening lecture to students so that they could better understand what she was seeking and the constraints of the design. For instance, the students initially discussed an interactive map. Our client explained that many people will be using the maps, who will be using the maps, do not actually have the ability to use something like an interactive app. She also explained that the maps would need to be legible when printed on on really poor quality printers. 
um, often they used donated printers to the clinic. Um, in addition, there was a desire to learn more about the, in, for goals that the students have. There was a desire to learn more about the industry through this venue and to be a const in constant communication and critique. So with that, we have the what of the experience. Now we needed to have the how. How did we want to be together? What type of culture did we want to create? So many of the examples that were discussed were about open and honest communication. One question that I like to ask during this process is how will we deal with conflict? It normalizes the concept that we'll likely have a disagreement on how to move forward, especially around creative activities. And this isn't something to be avoided. I was also surprised by the desire of everyone to be connected beyond the classroom. When we first met with the client, she spent some time explaining what low literacy really means and why typical maps don't work. The crowded roadmaps of the city had too many words and symbols for the patients to decipher. However, she also explained that people with low literacy does not mean that people cannot read at all. Many times they're at a third or fourth grade level. However, some patients are very, very low literacy. She emphasized that her patients are incredibly sharp individuals, very sharp individuals, but they never were provided the correct training to learn to read. The people she was working with had strong symbol literacy. For that reason, we could include some names of streets. If you think of each letter as a symbol to be interpreted, therefore stringing together many letters becomes overwhelming, but the length of a word combined with the, the first couple letters can be something that people can decipher. She encouraged us to use corporate symbols over words to indicate the location of some recognizable stops along the routes. So overall, the process that we used was to get that understanding from, from the client, set the culture of our group, and then the next few steps, research solutions, learn necessary software, develop examples, critique, that sort of happens in a loop and you know jumping in between them um, until we finalize the maps and then finally test the maps. So from here, Vanessa will give you a more detailed explanation of the student approach. Well, you know, I'll, I'll start by uh, kind of discussing some, some more things before the actual design. Um, and that is design, design criteria established and then discussing some research stuff and then division into teams before we really dove into the um, designing itself. Um, so the practicum first took the time to establish some general design goals, which of course included the initial request goals, but also involved researching what wayfinding and what wayfinding research and designs existed already that may have helped establish some standards for this kind of work. Um, an important criteria, as Tanya noted, also was that it would be produced in black and white. Um, it's important to note this in the established design criteria since um, grayscale mapping is very particular and also taking into account uh, the level of contrast that would be needed for a uh, poor printer quality. Um, next slide. As part of the map um, design, we also needed to include some other elements that helped aid the user in wayfinding the navigation that wasn't technically on the map itself. Um, we needed to show the types of services that were available for whoever was using the map to get somewhere. So these services were clothes, meals, medical care, and needle exchange. Um, so we ultimately provided this information in a legend area so that the specific map area could be also reprinted for different purposes, depending on the user and where they were going. And then it could be circled if there was one or multiple items. And then times could be added by the person giving the map, um, as well as the dates when things were available. Um, so this made the maps uh, multifunctional so that any given area could be reused depending on that, the particular service for a particular time or date. Uh, and all the maps started with a the free clinic at the beginning of the directions, since that's where the maps were obtained. Uh, next slide. As in any map design, and of course, especially for cartographic students, we were thinking very deeply about various cartographic principles uh, because we wanted to prove that we understood them. Um, so here are a few cartographic principles that we're really thinking about. Uh, visual con contrast, figure ground, visual hierarchy, legibility, and balance. Um, next slide. 
as noted before, original contrast really mattered uh, because depending on the printing quality, it would really result in a very illegible map if we didn't find the right contrast level. Um, to ensure visual contrast, we did continuously adjust grayscale as we went through iterations in order to achieve a result that we really liked that would work for a variety of printers, and we did test across printers. Um, next slide. Figure ground uh, was also very important in the design process, just like any map, um, but it's important to highlight here. Uh, for those who don't hear this term that often, it is essentially our cognitive perception in our brains um, that forces us to kind of separate images into a figure, into an object, and into a background. Um, this is essentially kind of how optical, many optical illusions work, especially this one on the left. So this image shows two black blobs on the sides, um, and you probably initially may see two faces, or you initially see a vase chalice type thing. Um, and there's no, your, your brain is kind of forcing one or the other to come to the fore. And you can see them both at the same time, but it kind of creates a giant effect. Um, so we wanted to take advantage of this cognitive, you know, Thing that exists in our brain, um, but force it so that we would make sure that things that we wanted to be highlighted were brought to the foreground. Um, that included a variety of things, um, but we used things such as drop shadows to really help force things like uh, the, the little uh, screen cap I took there with the illustration and the circle with some drop shadow that really helped to bring it even more to the foreground. Um, next slide. Uh, so that all relates to visual hierarchy, which, as many of us know, is such an important part of making maps, um, ensuring that the parts that are the most important and most needed to understand quickly um, come to the foreground while also maintaining them in a legible way um, is what we really, creating them in a legible manner um, was really on, on the forefront of our mind, especially with the fact that we weren't including a lot of um, language elements in this. So we did that by, like I said before, um, utilizing drop shadow and again using um, contrast. So here we have the uh, streets and in a white color um, against a gray color for the general background. And we also didn't want to include too much other extraneous information. So we didn't include building footprints intentionally to so that we would be able to add a lot of symbology on top, um, the symbology being um, brand icons and um, dash lines and other pieces that you see on this map. So essentially, visual hi hierarchy helped aided us a lot in making sure that um, the information was easy to read. Uh, next slide. So next, we also thought about um, research for ourselves. As I noted before, uh, there wasn't enough research for wayfinding relative to um, non-language centric design. So next slide, we started um, research, reading through journal articles, papers, and the web. Um, and in general, we realized that there just wasn't enough for map design specifically. So we chose to create a research plan um, for ourselves so that we'd be able to analyze and document the results, as well as created a plan for research for user testing so that the resulting information could be shared for other designers and cartographers who would potentially want to um, work on a similar design. Um, and so with that, we then turned to designing and we divided into a couple teams um, in order to begin the design research portion. Next slide. The class divided into two groups. One was a directions focused group whose criteria for design was to include nonverbal directional aids, such as arrows to assist map readers, and then no directions group uh, whose conditions were, as the name implies, to include no directional aids. Um, this meant trying to find a way finding map design um, overall that didn't depend on direction related stuff. So here I used an example like using brand icon imagery for um, reference while driving around. Um, next slide. Dividing into teams meant that there could be intentional focus for specific non-language focused elements, which would allow the best elements out of the resulting iterations to be used in the final design. The process also gave the cartographers free reign in terms of creativity and research 
um, which essentially means everyone's brains and skill sets were utilized to their fullest um, in allowing people to really focus on something specific while also allowing folks to design with what they thought was best. Um, once uh, designers finished design over a specific period of time, uh, we all met and chatted about it. Um, in the tech world, this is known as agile sprints, basically iter iterating over ideas and product and design. And this image is definitely from the tech vocabulary, but I submit the claim that design as a whole and with no exception, cartography has always been an incredibly iterative process. So obviously at this point of the practicum with all these goals established and the iterative process beginning, um, we started analyzing and critiquing um, the designs themselves and really just determining amongst ourselves what was working best and what didn't, and then subsequently changing the next iterations based off of critique conversations with each other. Uh, next slide. After about a month of group designs and iterations, each cartographer was tasked with using what they thought was the best design elements, such as color contrast, symbol type, color box, um, that we had discovered through our group conversations what really worked. And then we took those best elements and all individually designed and created what we thought was the best final design. And then we all got together again, uh, assessed those and took the best elements of our, I don't know, semi-finals of maps. And from there, we determined the final design. So essentially it was iteration after iteration and conversation after conversation. And we eventually determined what the best design was there. Next slide. So what did we determine through all those iterations, what the most important design elements were for this particular map? Um, for, in terms of the main route for focus, we created a black dashed line. Um, the dash itself separated it a lot, the main route from the other road, the rest of the road network that we were using, and of course the black really created some uh, heavy contrast alongside the rest of the roads. Um, the arrows along the route helped uh, really highlight where the turn needed to happen because we do understand that arrows mean movement and turning. Um, in addition to providing symbology along the route, uh, not only street lights, but also reference spaces like brand icons like Taco Bell in this um, image right here. Uh, folks, usually big brand imagery can be seen along the road. And so that really helped um, that pictorial symbology um, and then the circled number routes also that you see here, the one and two that are in those dark gray circles, um, aligned with a legend, um, a turning legend essentially, that was also on the page. So the driver would have a um, the legend be oriented in their point of view, so they could associate themselves in terms of their real world um, perception and not be possibly confused by having to turn the map. So that helped so they wouldn't have to physically move the map um, while driving. Uh, next slide. And we also provided pictorial symbology of recognizable buildings and structures to help the user confirm that they're on the correct route. And this was also great for reference because ultimately at the end of the route, they could also confirm that they found the correct building in the event that um, it looks similar to a building nearby. We could add details as needed. For example, this particular building clearly has a little shed in the front and has two huge bushes. Um, so folks would be able to understand that that's the final destination. And back to you, Tanya. Uh, yeah, so we there were some unanticipated outcomes from the project. Um, that we we celebrated uh, first, our clients took the work that we had done and presented at local community colleges um, to talk about the need for such maps and continue to talk to her colleagues and public health experts. Um, and while they often had discussed the challenges of rural medicine, many of them had never seen this uh, wall to the inability to get to services because of a lack of proper wayfinding tools. Um, and many of them were interested in exploring this further. She reminded me of the question that the students had asked, can't patients just use cell phones? And in a new position that she had taken after we had done the project, she said the Wi-Fi and cell connection is so bad that they had to install their own network to receive emergency calls. So even if patients did have cell and data plans, uh, it wouldn't be reliable in the rural areas. And even now with the ability to download tiles ahead of time, 
uh, they wouldn't have been able to do so at a clinic at the clinic where people could have walked them through what to expect. So the design still uh, holds up in some of the rural places that would be using some of these, these maps. So another unexpected outcome was how empowering the map users would feel in being able to, to use the maps and navigate to the locations where they were going. Uh, we had hoped to do user testing as part of the class and spent a bit of time outlining what that would look like, but ultimately it turned out to be beyond what we could accomplish during the, during the semester. So instead, our client asked a patient about an interest in testing the maps. Uh, the patient agreed, and the patient rode in the passenger seat, the nurse rode in the driver's seat and drove, and the patient's literacy teacher rode in the back seat with full copies of each of the maps. The nurse described the reaction of the patient as being impossible to capture in words. Uh, the satisfaction in completing the task of locating the proper buildings and using a map. Um, the, the patient said, I'm so grateful for the time the students spent on developing the food bank maps, which is what they had called the project. Um, not just the maps, but the effort to reach out to a group that gets passed over and for very simple needs of food, clothes, and healthcare. Um, so, how did those rides go? The patient who is self-described as not a great reader, um, but can read simple sentences and recognize letter groups, um, around, having around a third grade uh, reading level, means that they're not able to read the word, but can compare, for example, the map had Vermont um, written on the street, um, could compare those first few letters um, and, and look at the map and then look at the sign and understand where they were. Uh, the patient was in their early 30s and had never before used a map. Uh, all of the maps started, as Vanessa mentioned, with the free clinic as the beginning point, um, since it was a common point on all of the maps where they would be handed out. When the patient arrived with the maps um, at the free clinic, the nurse asked the patient if they could tell where they were on the map. The patient looked around the surroundings out the windows and then looked at the map and was very excited when they could uh, connect the logo on the map to the logo on the door. Uh, they spent a moment going over the, the maps on the symbol and were able to identify lights, fast food, hospital, that sort of thing, and the patient was able to direct the nurse then through all of the turns following the map. The Starbucks logo, logo was described as that lady with the green hair as the corporate name was not known to the patient, um, indicating to us um, a need to be aware of um, some assumptions that we make may make when we're creating products projects like this. Uh, there was one missed turn and the nurse trusted that they would get back on course and allowed the patient the time to review the maps and surrounding. Uh, we had included enough roads just off the path so that uh, they could follow the, the paths back to uh, the main path. Um, and the patient was able to look at the pattern of the roads and then also see an icon that had been drawn and direct the nurse back to where they needed to go. Um, they then tested many other maps. Um, they would go back to the clinic and, and drive to um, other locations. And there was one, there were two locations that were geographically close to one another. Um, and the, the map literacy of the patient increased significantly as they, they continued to go through the process. And they were then able to compare the two maps and see that they had tried, they had been near, um, to an, an earlier location. Uh, let's see. The maps contained other information, as Vanessa had mentioned, um, about times and types of services that were offered, and the patient was able to look at that and understand what was needed or what was offered at each of the locations. Uh, things that they particularly liked on the map um, were the literacy educator had said that they really liked having only one location per map. Um, they said, even if things were very close geographically, it would have been too much to include on one map. Um, and the patient said uh, that if they were to use the map on their own, they would first look at it, study it, and then drive that route. They did comment that it might be good to have another person with them to look at it for a reference if needed while driving. Uh, the, the patient felt very accomplished in tack tackling the new challenge and more confident in the ability to read maps as the testing went on. Uh, we actually, as the testing went on, we got quite a bit of feedback from the patient that would help us improve the maps in the next iteration, um, which the nurse had noted to us that 
there was a, a big jump in confidence from the first map to the second or third map that was used. Uh, the patient made plans to attend dinner service that happens near a literacy class on one of the nights um, during the week. So um, this project has sat with me for all of these years. Um, and I continually ask, where else could we be working and, and what else are you all doing? I'd love to hear more about what you know or you've seen or you've already worked on. Um, and I hope that you'll reach out to us uh, to let us know all the different ways that you're using maps with, um, with different projects that maybe we haven't heard of or need to be reminded of. So thanks so much.